ते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा We are reading this morning in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 16, Krishna chastises the serpent Kaliya. We are up to text number 35. Tapaha sutaptam kim anena purvam nirasta manena Cha manadena dharmota va sarva jananukampaya yato bhavams tushati sarvajivaha tapasutap, excuse me, tapasutap Tam kimani napurvam nirastamani na chamanadena dharmo tava sarva jananukampaya yato bhavam stushati sarva jivaha Tapasutaptam kimane na purvam Nirastamani na chamanadina Dharmo tava sarva jananu kampaya Yato bhavam stushati sarva jivaha Tapasutaptam kimane na purvam Nirastamani na chamanadena Dharmo tava sarva jananu kampaya Yato bhavam stushati sarva jivaha Sitaptam kimane na purvam Tam kimane na purvam Manadena Tamota sarvara jananu kampaya Yato bhavam tushati sarvajiva Tam chimane na purvam Nirastamani na chamanadena Any ladies like to hear? Tapasutaptam kimane na purvam
Tapah, austerity, sutaptam, properly performed, kim, what, anina, by this kalya, purvam, in previous lives, nirastamanina. Being free from false pride, Being free from false pride. Cha, cha and, and. Manadena, manadena giving respects to others, giving respects to others. Dharmaha, dharmaha religious duty, duty. atava or, or else sarvajana, sarvajana to all persons Anukampaya, with compassion. Yataha, by which. Bhavan, your good self. Tushati, is satisfied. Sarvajivaha, the source of life for all beings. Translation. Did our husband carefully perform austerities in a previous life with his mind free of pride and full of respect for others? Is that why you are pleased with him? Or did he in some previous existence carefully execute religious duties with compassion for all living beings? And is that why you, the life of all living beings, are now satisfied with him. This, of course, is the Naga, uh, wives of uh, Kaliya Naga, Naga Patni. This is the purport by the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. In this regard, Srila Prabhupada comments in his Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Volume 1, Chapter 16, uh, <clears throat> the Naga Patnis confirm that one cannot come in contact with Krishna without having executed pious activities in devotional service in one's previous lives. As Lord Chaitanya advised in his Shishastaka, one has to execute devotional service by humbly chanting the Hare Krishna mantra thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street and not expecting honor for oneself but offering all kinds of honor to others. The Nagaputnis were astonished that although Kaliya had the body of a serpent as the result of grievous sinful activities at the same time he was in contact with the Lord to the extent that the Lord's lotus feet were touching his hoods. Certainly this was not an odd, the ordinary result of pious activities. These two contradictory facts astonished them. Nama Um Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhaktivedanda Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasate Deve Gaudavari Pacharini, Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschacha De Sutarini, Omangyanam Timuranda Shagananjana Shalakaya, Chaksurun Miritam Jainam Tasmai, Sri Gurave Namaha, Vanshakal Patrubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhebacha, Patitanam Pavanavio, Vaishnavavio, Namo Namaha. So the Nagapatnis are astonished. I don't know how this marriage came about, that their husband was such a bad guy and they were such good devotees. But sometimes we see that, don't we? You know that. <laughs> Very pious wife, praying for a husband all the time. He's going out drinking, everything, just praying and praying. So here, uh, this is what the, the Nagapatnis, they prayed to Lord Krishna. Uh, as they will when, when we're in a distressed condition we pray, pray to Krishna uh, please uh, in this case uh, save our husband 
So this was his, this punishment for him was, was great. Actually, at first they thought Krishna would kill him, I believe. They thought you know, he would just die. But, uh, and okay, we'll be widows, that's fine. <laughs> so we can live without him. <laughs> but now he decided to spare him. Uh, and so uh, now, the, now they could understand that something special is here. So this is a contradictory situation and actually one that we have come into contact many times within our own Hare Krishna movement that somebody seems to be have gotten great mercy or is, do some very some pious activity in Krishna consciousness and then sometimes do something very bad. Uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, so they're asking about uh, Purvam in his previous life. What happened? In his pre because in order to get this mark, the Krishna's feet on his forehead, this Vaishnavas have this, you know, we have a mark of Krishna on our, our head. And here's Kaliya, who certainly doesn't deserve it. He's got in Krishna's lotus feet like this. We would all like to have Krishna's feet on our head, one way or the other. We know we are saved. <laughs> If Krishna puts his feet on our, on our head. And so they're thinking now, no, this is not just, uh, he must, it must be something in his past. Uh, he performed uh, austerities. Uh, uh, is that why you are pleased with him? They, they want to say. Because they, when they say this, nirastamanena chamanadena, uh, here, uh, uh, we are quoting from uh, Prabhupada's uh, commentary in the, in the Krishna book. Uh, uh, he is naturally reminded of the Shishastrika prayers. Ha uh, uh, manada manadena, chunada pi sulichena, torori vasahishnuna, amanina manadena, kirtaniya sadahari. That's the third prayer. And it illustrates that one is actually fixed in Krishna consciousness. It's the stage of nishta. Hmm? Before that, uh, anartani vritti, and then nishta. Uh, and, and, and so here, actually, you know, a, a, a fairly advanced, in, not that advanced, but at least when one has attained the stage of being nishta, uh, and Prabhupada uh, usually referred to this as being fixed up in Krishna consciousness. You should get fixed up in Krishna consciousness. It's not, it's not that advanced, but when, once one has attained the stage nishta, it not, it, you know, pretty much you don't fall down. Because that's the meaning of nishta, you're fixed. You're, but you're not a completely immune from falling down, of course. And so it happens like that, that somebody uh, may uh, uh, may, may get there because this is very, you know, a very unusual to see in this world that anyone is humble and offers all respects to others. Uh, that's the Vaishnava way, but it's not the way of the world. Uh, the, the way of material life is the path of pride. Let me come bigger, let me come better, let me come greater. But in Krishna consciousness, the way up, that is the way of spiritual advancement, is the way down. It's the way of humility. Uh, uh, to become humble. Uh, and uh, devotees who want to adv advance in Krishna consciousness seek out humility. They desire to become humble. Of course, materialists can, can't, they can't understand this at all. And they may, you have some inferiority complex, you, you uh, are seeking out uh, self-punishment in some way. Uh, and it is, but it is not that devotees seek out humility for its own sake. Oh, it's because one discovers that when I uh, become humble, then my love for Krishna increases. And when pride comes in, it goes away. So devotees, when they begin to, begin to gain some, some uh, feeling for Krishna, uh, th that's what we want. And we find out that when, uh, when humility is there, that increases. 
So it is love for Krishna. Huh? So this is our instruction. Uh, 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 like this. So they think he must have done this. But then maybe something went wrong somewhere. Because also we see that things go wrong. Actually I had, I had the uh, uh, realization just recently that I'm thinking, well, we are told by Srila Prabhupada, you, you become a devotee in your, your, uh, this life, you must have performed, it's usually a continuation from a past life. And so it's very fortunate that you can become a devotee and continue in your advancement. But it also means that in my past life I was a failure, at least for most of us. <laughs> Maybe some are here for other reasons, for good reasons, but most of us, we got so far and we did something wrong. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, what did I do wrong? Uh, and uh, uh, especially if you, you become, you know, this, this far advanced, what could you do wrong? And I... I uh, it's here where one has to look at the offenses against the holy name. That somehow you can be a devotee and you, we somehow commit offenses uh, against the holy name. And so we are instructed to guard very carefully uh, against these offenses. Because, because you have to, we have to remember that sins and offenses are two different things. Uh, uh, I mean, while all sins may be offenses, offenses, you know, there, there are offenses that are not exactly sins. For example, it's an offense to maintain material desires, not to have complete faith in the holy name. Now, if I have material desires in my heart, but there's a way to satisfy material desires that is not sinful, you know, according to the directions of the Shastra, or I just may have a, a material desire and uh, I don't act on it, but still I don't give it up. That's, that's an offense, just to maintain a material desire. That's something that happens in the mind. Uh, in, in, we're told in Kali Yuga, at least if you commit some sin that's mental, you don't suffer reaction. But if it's an offense, it's still there. So the offenses are, uh, they have to be guarded against. Uh, so, so this is uh, our, our first thing, to at least come to this, this stage uh, of Amanina Manadena, we have to at least begin to become free from offenses huh? uh, uh, or trying. This is, Prabhupada calls this chanting on the clearing platform. Uh, there's three platforms uh, of chanting, offensive, clearing, and pure. So offensive platform, I chant, I commit offenses, and I don't do anything about them. Uh, and I have, I have seen in our uh, uh, Hare Krishna society, that some people uh, that they they read Krishna book every day, they glorify Srila Prabhupada, but they think their service to God is blaspheming devotees. <laughs> That's what they do. They go on the internet. Da, da, da. <laughs> so this happens, uh, the, uh, and because they're committing offenses, they they think uh, 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 they're not making any advancement. And then they think, why am I not making many advancement? Oh, it's because the gurus aren't pure enough, or the GBC is this, or somebody else's fault. That's the reason, you know. There are no pure devotees, and, and so on. So we see these things happen. So there can be these mixtures, on the one hand, that people are, are practicing Krishna consciousness in so many ways, or I'm just talking about the Hare Krishna movement, but go to Braj and look around at all the people with different kinds of tilak and what their lives are like sometimes. You know, this is the fact. Uh, they love Krishna, but at the same time, they help, they think that Ganja helps their love, you know, something like that. This, this is going on. Uh, 
So we have, we have to practice Krishna consciousness on, on the clearing stage of chanting. We, uh, Prabhupada says this almost pure, almost pure chanting. Uh, uh, I'm committing offenses, not pure, but trying to become free from offenses. Uh, this, uh, this, 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 then what's, the pure name is not manifest, but, but Namabasa is manifest. When, when there, when there's, when there's, when I'm committing offenses and not trying to become free from them, then, uh, uh, what we experience is Nam, uh, Aparad. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, then the holy name is no better than letters of the alphabet. The potencies are not manifest. Uh, but when we're trying to become free from the fences, we're following the process of Krishna consciousness and trying to become free from offenses, then what's manifested is nam abasa. Uh, abasa means, uh, just like here, we can see the, su the sunlight is coming to the room. We can't see the sun, but we can see the sun. That, that projection of light into darkness, this is abasa. Uh, uh, so this is the dawning twilight of the holy name. We can't see the holy name. Namacharya Haridas Thakur compares this to the dawning twilight. The sun is below the horizon, but the dawning light is in the sky, and so the forest becomes safe, the, the dacoits, the ghosts, uh, the, uh, the wild animals, they go away. And so, and so he, the, he makes this claim, it got him, a, made some controversy when he made this claim, you may read this in Chaitanya Charjamrita, that Nam Abbas, Mir Nam Abbas, destroys all sinful reactions and the fruit is moksha, is mukti. Just Nama Bas. And then some Mayavadis present became offended by this. <laughs> but that's what he said. Huh? And then he said the Shuddha Nam, the pure name, gives Prema. That's the pure name. So, uh, by our, our effort should be to at least, by our own effort, get uh, on the platform of uh, clearing. So that this uh, this nam, at least nama basa is manifest. Uh, that's what we should do, uh, and and so, uh, and that that clearing up. You know, this is in the second of the Shastika prayer. The second Shastika prayer is very interesting because the first is so magnificent. You know, all the benedictions that come from chanting. You know, they're just uh, beautifully. Uh, 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 explained, you know, uh, uh, one after the other, how these these things uh, happen when the vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam when Sankirtanam is is uh, victorious, you know, then all these things will happen one after the other, and you, uh, you know. and so it's, it's wonderful. Uh, but the mood of the second verse. First he says, Nam Namakari Bahuda Nija Sarva Shaktis Tatarapita. You have given us so many names and placed in them all your potencies. Tava Kripa Bhagavan. That is your mercy. But Mama Durdaiva, you notice the contrast. Tava Kripa Mama Durdaiva. Mama Durdaiva. My misfortune is that even so, I still have no uh, uh, attraction for your chanting. Uh, this anuraga is not there, doesn't manifest. This is my misfortune. And so there's a contrast here when, when, the Mahapra, and when Mahaprabhu recites this, uh, these prayers. It's the last chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Shishastika prayers. And Mahaprabhu is reciting these verses to Sarva, I mean, uh, to, to uh, um, uh, um, Swarup Damodar and Ramananda Roy. They're together and he's, he's chanting, reciting these prayers and discussing them also in Bengali. Uh, uh, and and it, it says that when, when Mahaprabhu recited this 
verse, he felt two things. Uh, vishada means lamentation, grief, and dainya, humility. Uh, because he's thinking, here's the Lord's mercy and here's my misfortune. Uh, I have to, for example, uh, when one sits down to chant the holy name and he begins to, to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I mean, here is the name of Krishna, none different Krishna, filled with all transcendental opulences. Nama Chintamani Krishna, Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. That's the name. And now it's in front of my, my, my right here, Hare Krishna, Hare. I, I, even I can chant it, which is remarkable that I'm allowed to say these names. I, I can say these names. And then three, four mantras go by and then I'm uh, thinking of breakfast or thinking of some, my mind has gone somewhere else. That means na anuraga, that my mind goes away. And then I have to force myself, I bring it back. This is the, cl the clearing stage. My mind goes away, I notice it goes away, I bring it back. Uh, this is what call, Prabhupada calls mechanical. And this is what's described by, by, by Krishna in the... the uh, uh, this described... Uh, uh, when, um, as in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The mind wanders, you bring it back. He's describing yoga. Wherever the mind goes, you bring it back. That's what he's describing. And of course Arjuna says, well, you know, the mind is really <laughs> hard to control. It's, it, it wants to go everywhere. It's like the wind, you can't control it. Krishna says you have to make your concentration like a, like a candle flame in a windless place, but the mind is like a hurricane, you know, like a cyclone. It blows everywhere. What, what am I supposed to do? And Krishna says, well, yeah, I understand the problem. You're right, the mind is difficult con to control. And he says, but you can do it. Uh, by abhyasa and by vairagya. Abhyasa means practice. Huh? Krishna mentions that many times in the Bhagavad Gita. Abhyasa, yoga, yuktena, chaitasa, na, anyagamana. The mind doesn't go anywhere else. This is abhyasa, practice. Practice means repetition. Just like we practice so every day, 16 rounds, this is repetition. You want to learn how to play madanga, you have to practice. You want so many things. Uh, you want to learn how to write when you're a child, you have to practice. It's boring, you hate it, but they force you. <laughs> so practice requires sometimes a little force. Uh, so that, 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 that's the clearing stage. You practice, the mind goes away. But that clearing stage, when, when there's anuraga, then, you know, you, it sticks. You'd rather chant your rounds than do anything else. You're happier doing this. If I can have all day just to chant Hare Krishna, I'll do it. This, this, this is what Lord, uh, but so Lord Chaitanya laments. Not, uh, you give me your names and still I'm not attracted. And, and the, the answer is we practice. Uh, and, and that practice means I chant the holy name while trying to give up offenses. And how do I do that? Because the, the, the next verse uh, uh, of the Shishastika prayers, Trinada Pisuni Chena, but even if, you see in the, in, in the second verse, Lord Chaitanya is feeling dainya. This is your mercy and this is my misfortune. So already there's some humility. So then I realize, yeah, it's trinada pi suni chena. I, I, I should feel myself like, uh, like, like a straw in the street. I once, once was listening to some uh, tape of Prabhupada on a morning walk. And one of my god brothers said to him, Prabhupada, how can I become humble? Now you could see from his tone of voice, he was thinking, how can I, with my good looks, my education, 
my talents, think myself into the unnatural and artificial position of humility. <laughs> so, uh, but humility is not unnatural and artificial. Uh, because sometimes we have this, uh, this human form of life, we think we are a big deal, we can raise up skyscrapers, we can uh, stop rivers from flowing, we can blow up mountains, you know, look what we can do. You know, we are triumphant over nature. <laughs> we think we're something. But uh, we should consider the fact that we are a jiva. And as such, we're equal to every other jiva. Whatever the body may be, the jiva is one ten thousand tip of a hair in size. And if you just think of all the jivas as they naturally are, how many are jivas are there? Well, you can't count them. So if you could just see the jivas without their different bodies and minds and everything, and just the jivas stretched out before you in their numbers, the thing that they most would re re resemble is grass, <laughs> big lawn of grass. That's our position. So actually, this is very appropriate, like a blade of grass. That's our real position. Huh? So we should think of this way. So we, we should un understand. A and we are so fortunate that somehow or other, by somebody's mercy, we are able to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We don't deserve it. Uh, if, and if we are here in this material world, we should accept the fact that we are criminals. We are in jail. Uh, we are trying to rehabilitate ourselves, but we have done some crime. Just like here at Kalyanaga, why have I got this body? It's because of some wickedness uh, uh, that I've got this body. So why am I still here in the material world? Uh, so it's okay. But, but the, on, on the one hand, we, we, it's two ways we should think. I am unworthy, but I have got the mercy of Krishna. Because we wouldn't be sitting here today, we wouldn't be able to even have beads or bee bags if we didn't somehow or other have the mercy of Krishna. Which means somewhere along the line, we receive the mercy of a Vaishnava. Because they are the ones that pass out Krishna's mercy. Uh, Krishna's delegated the, his mercy to, the, to his devotees to spread. Of course, then he wants to do it himself, so he has to appear as Lord Chaitanya, so he can, he can also take part in that activity. But only, that's how he spreads his mercy the most, in the form of Mahaprabhu. So we are all uh, recipients of Krishna's mercy. And we, should, we understand that we are not worthy. Uh, so this is Amanina. I, I may th I may, when I look at myself, I may think I have turned away from Krishna and come to this material world. Uh, there's a broken relationship between me and Krishna. That's a fact. In the material world, there's many times there's broken relationship. And at least in my country, many times a husband and wife, their relationship is bad. Or in the family, the son and the father. They go to counselors. Even in business firms, they have counselors. You know, help people get along together. So people are being, have to repair broken relationships. And you go to the counselor. They'll always tell you, well, there's fault on both sides. Yeah, that's usually what they say. Because each, each person says, I am innocent, but he's guilty. <laughs> I'm good, but they're bad. And the other one is thinking, no, I'm good and you're bad. Right? This is, and there's no there's fault on both sides. But when it comes to our relationship on Krishna, we have to say, he's perfect. I'm 100% bad. It's all my fault. I have to accept it. I have committed this crime of turning away from Krishna. How could I do that? How could I turn away from somebody so wonderful? But I did it. 
Maybe because he's so wonderful. Maybe because I'm not, you know. Maybe there's some envy there. But somehow or other, we have done this. We have rejected Krishna. We, have, we are in the material world. Uh, so that's the first fact. On the other hand, the other fact is, Krishna has not rejected us. He hasn't done to us what we have done to him. Because I'm chanting Hare Krishna. That means Krishna wants me back. It's, a, it's an amazing thing about Krishna. He's in the spiritual world. And he has so many marvelous, perfect devotees who are beyond our imagination of what satisfaction and happiness they give Krishna. There's so many of them. And here in this little corner of the world, you know, there's the us, the fallen soul. <laughs> Why is God making me suffer? <laughs> we're, we're here, you know. Uh, and yet Krishna wants us back. I mean, he wants each one of us. That means Krishna sa thinks that each one of us has something to offer him. Now, we don't know that, what it is, maybe, what we have to offer. But he wants us. He sees something in us. So that's Tavakripa Bhagavan. <laughs> that is your mercy. He, he wants us back. And he's willing to actually move heaven and earth. I mean, if you want to see how much Krishna wants us back, we should think, well, I, what I think of is what Srila Prabhupada went through to spread this movement all over the world. Because, because he had, it was not easy. He saw his spiritual master's own institution fall apart around him. When, when, when the Gaudiya Mat was healthy, it was wonderful. It was incredible powerful, was growing like crazy. And then something happened, the, some Anarthas began among the leaders, or, and it fell apart. It crashed around. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada had his order, and he was going to fulfill it. And, and one, one time when Srila Prabhupada was in Los Angeles, he t is telling his, uh, his disciples, how he received this order to preach in the West from his spiritual master. He said, I couldn't imagine what I would do. I was, that time I was a householder, I was doing business. You know, the order to go to preach in English, go to the West, Prabhupada had given to all his leaders. So everybody knew what it meant. It meant go to the West. Uh, 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 and Prabhupada said, at that time I was a householder, I couldn't think I, what I would do, but I took it seriously. Then, and then he said how he read Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary uh, on Vyavasa Atmika Bodhi verse in Bhagavad Gita and said, yeah, I should just take this order and just execute it, whether it's possible or impossible, just do it. So he, in that spirit he continued. Uh, and then he, he, he came and Krishna made it possible even though he was by himself he had no money he had nothing he, he was 70 years old didn't have youthful energy didn't have good health had some heart attacks on the way over the Indian government would let him take 40 rupees out of India and no bank in America would exchange it <laughs> That time, 40 rupees was about seven dollars. The captain of the Jaladuta bought a set of Bhagavatams for 20 or 25 dollars. That was his startup capital for ISKCON. You know, it was like really nothing. But he did it. At least he showed Krishna he was serious. So, so this is what. So why did why so so. So he, Prabhupada told us, I have received this order from my spiritual master, and now it was his disappearance day. On the, this auspicious day of a disappearance, I am giving you the same order he gave me. And this is what he said. 
To some extent you have understood this Krishna consciousness, now you should have some feeling for suffering humanity. Vaishnava means to feel for suffering humanity. That was how he gave that order. You should feel for suffering humanity. Can you imagine the idea that so, here's, here was Prabhupada in India, you know, which is the, that time considered a poor, impoverished, backward, undeveloped country, feeling for the people suffering in America who had so much money. <laughs> but we were. <laughs> we were suffering. Uh, so, so he came. That is how he, d so, and he went through so much trouble. So that trouble that Prabhupada took, we know is how much Krishna cares for us. That his devotees will do that for him. So you, we should have no doubt that Krishna wants us back. So if Krishna cares for us, we should, we should you can afford to be humble. That's the important thing. What, what anybody else thinks doesn't really matter. <laughs> but, Krishna, but Krishna cares for us. And when we enter into a relationship with Krishna, we will find out what it is that he likes. Because we will become ourselves. Right now, we have this body and mind that is the not-self. So we will got, get that body. So th this is our process. We, we, we get fixed up, you know. Um, and he says, the first, first like grass, uh, hu humble, uh, amanina, not expecting any respect from anyone else, but manada, willing to give, that is the tree. One is the grass, manada, manadena, that's the, that's the uh, amanina, manadena. One is the grass and the other is the tree. Uh, it's fruits, it bows down. Uh, uh, and tolerant like anything uh, uh, and willing to give every, all respect to others. In this way you can constantly chant. So they're thinking that Kaliya, yeah that's, he must have at least done something like that in the, in the past. He must have been uh, a, 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 a devotee. Uh, 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 so here they're, they're seeing this. So this can happen. You, you can be a devotee and you can uh, fall away. Uh, but Krishna, still, we will keep going. Uh, we will keep going. Of course, we don't want to take advantage of this opportunity. We should try very hard to make this our last birth in the material world. We don't want to give any devotees any more trouble. They have to come back for us. The spiritual master actually has to come back or at least make some arrangement if we don't, don't complete this task. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so they say the Nagapatnis were astonished that uh, he had the body of a certain serpent yet he's in contact with the Lord to so, so extent that his feet were. Uh, touching his head. This is what all, everybody, all great devotees would like also. So this is the extraordinary benediction. Uh, uh, this mixture is there. Uh, well, let's, uh, let me just take a look here. I have Vishma Chakravarti Thakur's commentary on this verse. And let's see what he says. Uh, he says... Yeah, they say... Hmm... The Nagapatnis, this is how Vishnu Chakra, with his mind free from false pride and full of respect for others, Kaliya must have done austerities in a previous life. Such austerity is characteristic of a real Vaishnava, for one does not see this type of austerity practiced by the non devotees. As the Lord says, I am not pleased with wealth or with austerities. Ordinary austerities do not invoke the mercy of God. In some Previous life, Kaliya executed religious duties with compassion for all living entities, and thus he is a Vaishnava. Mercy toward all living entities is not seen in the heart of a fruitive worker. Yeah, because they say, it says here, just like that, uh, uh, with compassion for all living anukampaya, 
Sarva, uh, Sarva Jana Anukampaya. That means Vaishnava. That's, that's real mercy for everybody. So he must have been. That's how, that's how they, they can uh, conclude like that. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, maybe I'll stop now and see if you have any questions or comments. Huh? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, this point you were making about how we are in the material world, one corner cribbing that why Krishna is giving us this suffering. Mm -hmm. Something similar recently one person was asking me. He believes in Krishna, he respects the Gita, comes to the program. But his doubt is that uh, uh, why Krishna has given us, I mean, I have made a mistake, I have left Krishna, I have come here. But why so much suffering? Hmm. 84 lakh species and you know, so much of suffering. He could have given me little and then called yeah. me back. <laughs> he wants to say, why didn't I fall down to the heavenly planets? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we do not know the history of our crimes <laughs> right now, but we can see, I, I should see that uh, uh, if I am suffering, actually, you know, some, some places Prabhupada has said that actually when a living entity comes down, his first birth is Brahma, actually. So maybe gradually to get down here, it, you know, you go down by stages. <laughs> And you commit offense. I mean, Indra, we have so many times how Indra commits offenses. Huh? Even Indra. So you can, you can, you know, there's trouble in heaven <laughs> also. Uh, so anyway, we, the, we're, we're, when I am undergoing some suffering in the material world, uh, I mean, especially we preach in the West, people are angry at God. Really, it's always there, this anger at Krishna. Maybe he's not here. You, often, you know, people now, even in India, but in the, in the West, all the time, they're, they're, they're angry at God. I mean, I meet people who tell me, you know, they, they don't like God, they, they hate God. And it's very interesting exercise. I, they say they, or they say they don't believe in God. And I say, I ask them to describe to me the God they don't believe in then I can always say, I don't believe in that God either. <laughs> they describe some demon, you know, something like that. But that is, it's this anger that, that's there, that, 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 that God has made me suffering. He should have created a world where I can cause so much suffering to other people, but nothing bad happens to me. That's what they're thinking, you know. So we, we, should, we should accept that, that uh, I am... Whatever suffering I have undergone is because I have caused suffering to other people. Of course, these same people that are complaining that God is making them suffer, they're eating uh, cows, you know, they're, they're going creating such a path of destruction, even in one day, you wouldn't imagine. And they, they don't know what, uh, what, what it is. Anyway, if, for, for a devotee, we have to say uh, that this is, it, uh, uh, this, this is sent by Krishna and I accept it. And, we, uh, and I had a, uh, other people also, would, uh, say they become devotees and then they still suffer. We see that plenty of times. I remember one, one fellow, he was a uh, uh, new guy in our temple and uh, the, the, he was cleaning the kitchen and the, some, it was an old building we were renting and part of the kitchen ceiling fell down on him and hurt his back. And then he couldn't stop, at, I, I come, I surrender to Krishna and he, the ceiling falls down on me. Why did he do this? <laughs> uh, 
So the uh, if we are, the thing to do is to say some a difficult situation comes, I should somehow or other understand it as Krishna's mercy. And if I accept it in that way, I will understand how I can use it for my spiritual advancement. Srila Prabhupada has said, told us the story that when he first finally gave free from householder life and uh, uh, broke off everything and came to Vrindavan to stay in Vrindavan. Very uh, soon after he got there, he was gored. Some cow or a bull hurt him with a horn, uh, and apparently he was badly injured. And and uh, and he, he, he Prabhupada told us, um, I accepted that it was Krishna's mercy, but I could not understand how it was Krishna's mercy, but I accepted it. Then he said. Later on, I understood how, but I, he, I don't know what it was, but that's, he said that. Later on, I understood. So we, ha we accept it that way. It will help us make advancement. And in the humble mood is say, well, I deserve so much worse. And it's true. I can think of, you know, anyway. That, that we should, we, in that way, we will at least make, uh, we will at least make advancement. And that some people will always remain angry at God because uh, they're simply his enemies. The worst thing God did was he was God and not me. <laughs> you know, there are really people like that. Anyone may have time for one more word. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Bro, for your CGCS class. Uh, just wanted to know, as here it is said, Sarva Jananu Kampaya, uh, what is the difference between a philanthropic activity and a devotee's compassion to all living mm. beings? Yeah, the material philanthropic activity doesn't really get to the root of the problems. The, the root of all problems, the Vaishnava really helps the person. Your root problem, you have forgotten Krishna. The root problem, the root of all our problem suffering is spiritual. If I simply solve some immediate material problem, there's still suffering. Uh, if, 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 we, if, 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 if a medical worker goes and, 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 and people are suffering from starvation, I don't bring them food, but here's some fans to keep you cool while you die. You know, that's not really, you know, I could have made the other effort. <laughs> so, so here we, <laughs> we, 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 want, we, want, we want to go to the root. And, and this is the root of their, the, the cause of their suffering. And the philanthropic uh, business doesn't really, doesn't get, get to that. And they will again commit, they, 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 so they, they, we, we cure some disease or solve some material problem. What do they do? They go on and commit more sinful activities. They, the problem goes on. It's still not solved. That's the reason. Uh, maybe one last question, because I was told we have to stop now. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu, for your class. In today's verse, we are seeing three possible reasons why Kaliya could be receiving mercy mm -hmm. in this present mm -hmm. situation. So one is saying maybe he did tapta austerities. One is maybe he was very humble and eager to offer respects. And then he's, the third reason that is given is maybe he was merciful to everyone. Krishna also says in the Gita, yesham tu antagatam papam. So unless one gives up sinful life, you can't come to Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And we have also heard how Prabhupada once said that you don't have any qualification, I created your qualification. Mm -hmm. So these are two radically different views. So can you please help us as devotees to shed more light on this that if I read this, I don't have any of these qualities that are mentioned in today's shloka. Mm -hmm. Yet somehow I am there in devotional service. 
So what should be my mood to advance? Because many times we read shlokas like this in the Bhagavatam that unless you have done this in the past, unless you have done all the Vedic sacrifices, unless you have toured all the holy places, mm-hmm. you would not be a devotee now, you would not be chanting Hare Krishna mm-hmm. now. Yet we are, I am, sorry, I am chanting Hare Krishna today and I don't think I have done any of these activities. So can you please help me develop the right mood that what should be my mood when I read these shlokas? No, if, if, if some, there was some previous punya, uh, that, that punya uh, simply, you know, let us say, uh, somebody gives you mercy, a pure devotee gives you mercy, you can just knock it away. You know, they, they, you have to take it. And, and so, so sometimes just punya can predispose you to taking it. You know, it, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't cause it, but at, le- at least, you know, you, you, you'll accept. You'll accept something like that. Uh, or you can, you can do, uh, what's the term? Unknown devotional service. Uh, huh? Agyana Sukriti, yeah. Uh, you, you will do unknown devotional service. Just a charitable disposition, you help people out. You may help, uh, help out a devotee. But, but, but really the only cause of, of, of bhakti is bhakti. You know, Vishnu Chakravarti emphasizes so much. It is not that some punya uh, qualifies you for bhakti. There has to be mercy. But, you know, some things uh, you, will make you more liable to accept it when it comes. Because I've seen people reject mercy. Of course, we all have. The mercy is there and they reject it. Uh, now, you could sometimes, somebody will cram the mercy down your throat. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> This is the, there, you know, even in Vaishnava circles, there's been a de- debate, you know, like among the Sri Vaishnavas, is it like, does God save you like a cat or like a monkey? And also in Christianite circles, they have the same ideas. Do you have to do anything at all or not? Maybe sometimes, I don't know what, you know, is, things may, may, may vary from time to time. And then there can be what, what the Christians call irresistible grace. So you, can't, you cannot reject the mercy. <laughs> and then Krishna can do what he wants. You know, but but you, usually, you know, at some disposition, there's something that's, that, that makes it helpful for us. Okay? Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai.